Yo, yo, what is up, everyone? Welcome back to a brand new video, and it's Monday. So, new video stuff, go check it out. I'm leaving it right here if you haven't. Little updates the car's sitting down. Like I said, I don't really drive it, so we're gonna uncover it and start making the video. And draw right here, draw 5.0. He lost yeah, his dude. job. He uh, didn't last a week. I turned into the feds now. He's a feds now, so you gotta be watch out for him. So, he lost the job in the facility. I'm not gonna say what he does, but yeah, he does. <laughs> And he's he's pulling up with the Whipple. Oh yeah, no, no, big single turbo. Big single turbo. turbo. So yeah, guys, let's get started by uncovering the car and start driving to a location that we're gonna do this video. We're gonna be filming the bunking BMW mids. BMWs break down. How much are they? Are they that expensive? Are they that bad? How much is to modify? We're gonna find out in this video. And can you afford it? There you go, guys. We'll <laughs> see you in a little bit. All right, everyone. We have the car uncovered. We have to fill up the wheels to go start it. So like I said, in this video, we're gonna be busting or debunking BMW mids. That a lot of people have misconceptions about BMW or European cars in general. General. In my case, I have a BMW, so I'm going to be debunking my BMW mids that I have for my car that a lot of people think about. Common misconceptions that people have. I own a couple exotic Germany cars. No flex here, but like I have. So the same as Drew. Drew has like owned a couple like Supras in the past. Some AK4s, everything. Like That's Japanese. So in this video, I'm not going to be talking out of my mouth. I'm actually going to be looking at common myths that people think about BMWs and other German cars, like I was saying. So myth number one, that's going to be European cars are really expensive to maintain. In a case that might be the truth, but not in every other case. Like I have my car for like, it's 40,000 miles now. It shouldn't be starting giving me any problems. What is the main common theme it is? Maintenance is so expensive. And I'm not going to lie. If you do this maintenance out of warranty, mostly the dealership, it is going to be really expensive. But there's a lot of ways you can save money. I've done it both ways and I can tell you it does save you money. The first one will be clear example. Oil change. I wish I can find the paper. I'm gonna try to find it and then post a picture of it. Maintenance, most of the times, is gonna cost you at a dealership. They're gonna do a change. I think they're not even gonna change. They're just gonna clean your injectors, which I don't even really think they do because they run the same. Sh and then they're gonna do the oil change and basic things that they use in the car. And just because of that oil change, they're gonna charge you. They charged me 790 something around there. Basically 800 bucks just for a job that I could have done myself, which is buying the oil, the filter, and save myself some money. Okay, one way they can save money by this is first of all, doing works yourself. Uh, like I said, changing an oil is not really like a job that you cannot do. It's not something that's gonna be from another world. It's really simple. You just, if you don't know how to do it, just look it up on YouTube, how to change the oil on your car. Pretty simple process. If you messed up, don't worry about it. You can just restart again. Parts are not that expensive. Just make sure that you do buy the right oil for your BMW or Mercedes, whatever other car that you have, because that's the main thing. You don't want to put 5W30 in a car that has like 150,000 miles, and you don't want to put 1040 on a car that has 10,000 miles. So you got to make sure what oil you're using, synthetic, and in BMWs, make sure you guys are using the synthetic, full synthetic oil performance, and also the one that has the turbo power in it. That's the main thing. Turbo power oil helps a lot. Other maintenance problems that will be wastegates, bands, um, power trains. Yes, these are things that are really expensive to do one more time. A dealership if you guys cannot do it on your own you guys are not really handy or you guys don't really know your way through a car don't worry about it you can just take your car to a shop it is going to be kind of pricey but it's not going to be as pricey over there you can charge you like three thousand bucks because over there they charge you for the parts they charge you for the labor and they charge you for like building fees taxes everything else take it to the shop they're going to charge you probably a quarter from the price and it's going to be a same amount of work of course you got to take it to a nice shop don't take it to the shops in tijuana that we live right here but take it to the shops the real shops and i promise you guys it's not going to be that bad a car is not going to give you that much problems if you actually take care of the car if you're not like, abusing the car if you're not like doing stupid stuff with your car if you like every single day you're doing races and you're like doing donuts you're doing burnouts that's what car this is for but at the same time if you do that every day don't get scared when one day your car blows up an hour it's because you were pushing the limits out of it so like once in a while it's fine but try to take care of your car the more you take care of it the more it's gonna last all right guys that was number one we're gonna get started with the second one and like i said i'm reading up my list common bmw mids for busting stuff that would like people have misconceptions of number two and i'm gonna be deleting screenshots so you guys see i'm not lying what i'm telling you will be parts for european cars are always expensive i'm not gonna lie to you guys they do are but the same example with the first one of course if you buy a genuine part the bmw is gonna be always the best alternative because it's the right part it's the exact right number that you guys want for your car and at the same time you're buying quality german parts you're not buying any chinese things no shame there but you don't buy any chinese parts from autozone that are gonna blow up a month later what's your replacements first off if you guys have a bmw you guys know the main brands which is bosch and let me read from other i mainly use bosch for like spark plugs and stuff like that i know i want to change to the njk's but bosch it's the main one that i use i've also know there's satch landformer and trw these are actually really really good brands like i said they're like main bmw brands but what happens when the bland explodes let me open my hood and show you guys so come right here drop 
So in this car, most of the parts are botched because I like to buy the OEM brands, but most of my car hasn't exploded yet, so I haven't to worry about that. But the lines like this, bands, parts on the engine, little plugs like this, which are the sensors, you can do throttle body parts, cables. What is the thing about all these parts, guys? Let me tell you, there's actually a way that you can save money by buying really good parts at the same time saving yourself for some money, which parts are gonna be actually reliable. And they're actually like OEM. I'm not saying BMW brands. If you guys, I'm not getting paid, like Burger Motorsports, FC Euro, they actually sell parts that are called OEM or OE and they actually have perfect fittings for your car and they're actually half the price. For example, the only thing I had to replace my BMW so far was this line which I'm leaving the video right here which is the line that connects from the coolant to the radiator hose right here and that video is actually doing pretty good. It was really informative so thank you guys for supporting that video. I was actually going to buy the FCP Euro brand because it's an OEM fitment. It's OEM quality. It's made in Germany. The only difference is it's not a BMW brand so but according to a lot of people that brand's perfectly fine. It works the same. The only brand that I had was going to come in weeks and i didn't want to wait and the express shipping was 20 bucks actually for like overnight i didn't feel like paying it the part itself was 12 bucks and i pay 80 bucks for that part i feel like i got robbed but at the same time i need it because of necessity because if not my car was not going to move for like two weeks straight so for me i did it for necessity but if you guys ever need a part look up fcp euro they sell some amazing parts if you guys want to sponsor my channel hey hit me up we need some wheels some new turbos but yeah guys besides that i'm telling you you there's alternatives if you don't want to spend a hundred bucks in a part and you can get it for 50 or 40 or 25 and it's actually the same quality do it just do your research where the part comes from if it's fitment and look at the reviews that other guys are saying because if you had that problem in your bmw most of the times other people had them too all right guys we're going to be talking about number three in this list and this actually is really interesting to me and probably will be really interesting if you're interested in buying these cars you want to learn more about them or you're thinking about buying one so this number three mids says european cars are hard to work on this is actually a little controversy i'm going to tell you this this article is talking about this car is new to you and if it's new to you of course it's gonna be hard let me tell you this if you guys are watching this video you don't know about these cars there it's not the fact that they're hard to work on it's the fact that you don't know really a lot about them and because it's not a japanese car it's not built the same way as a camry a corolla a civic like that honda driving by right there but at the same time if you combine that with the fact that it, it's a different total market it's a different total engine it's a different total country of manufacturer you can tell the same thing about a muscle car you can take the same thing about a pony car you can do the same thing about basically any other car drove my friend right here he had a mustang gt he will tell you the same thing before that he actually he drove a turbo civic i'm gonna leave a picture right here it was a turbo civic all-wheel drive system single turbo and he had a mickey thompson as an old this old everything i'm telling you that thing was doing a thousand ten horsepower anyways guys what i'm trying to explain is this when you guys buy a car like this, you guys need to be familiarized with all this. That's what the article was explaining. So you guys want to learn about these cars. You guys are interested in buying it. What are you guys going to do? You got to learn. You got to watch videos. You got to talk to different people. You guys got to get familiarized with all this. Of course, I cannot open a freaking Ferrari and be like, yeah, that broke. Yeah, that broke yeah this is this no i need if, if i open a ferrari right now of course i'm not gonna know what it is i don't know if it's a flat engine i don't know if i, I know what it is but i don't know if it's a flat engine v engine or an inline engine you know it, there's no way to tell until you do some research and you learn stuff about your car the birds are singing for us right now they're singing for drill because they think he looks cute either way guys like i was saying of course when you buy a new car you're not gonna know what to do with it you guys are not gonna know what to work on the best thing that you guys can do is get familiarized with all this and learn the basic things where's your oil filter at like for me i did have no idea it was right here until I got my car. I had, that was new to me. I, I, I had Japanese cars. Like I said, I, I had a line of exotic cars, not Flex or anything, but I had the Lambo, Aventador S, VJ. I also had the Bugatti, uh, Chiron. I traded it in for a Camry and I also had the Koenisi Gagera. Really cool car, really cool car. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm capping with that. I'm, I'm capping. But either way, I'm telling you, of course, you're not going to know. What are you guys going to do? You're going to learn. When I got my first F30, which was this one, I, I didn't know anything. I did most of myself. I modified myself. I changed a couple things. I do my maintenance. Uh, me and my dad were like working it. If I cannot do it, my dad's actual mechanic he's an electrical engineer mechanic and if i don't know how to do it he'll help me out but if he doesn't know either we'll just find a way to do it and that's the way you guys have to do it bring your friend if you don't know how to do it and i know if you guys both know two monkeys make one big monkey <laughs> but like at the same time two people help each other so it'll be like good just do what i told you guys do your research get familiar with the engine what are the main problems with it what is the things that give you more problems and try to get educated in that so when you guys actually get that car you got actually familiarized with it myth number four and that is common misconceptions bmws they're always unreliable 
But where did this come from? It came from the line of E series BMWs and N series BMWs, which is the BMW from, I want to say 2006 to 2011. It's basically the E series. Like I know that car's amazing. The E60, I think it's the E60 M5. The V10 engine, amazing car. Enjoy it for two years, guys, because that's gonna die on you quick. I don't know, shame for you guys, but that's just gonna die. Same with an N54, 335. The amount of unreliable cars that there is, I'm not lying to you guys. Those cars are really unreliable because they have a lot of problems. But at the same time, don't they want car ruin your whole experience because i know a lot of people my friends i have one also an e46 car it has to be a 330 328 325 i think it is i've seen cars that people give good maintenance to those e46s e36s e30s f30s i met people that have over 2,000 miles on the clock i wish i can put their things but i'm not gonna drive all the way to freaking san clemente right baby san clemente just for a picture of a dash but yeah i'm telling you it's all about if you ask them it's all about maintenance if you guys take care of your car if you guys give it the right maintenance if you guys change the spark plugs on the correct time if your car you change the fluids recently you guys get maintenance to your parts clean the injectors change the injectors clean the fuel system everything like that little things can make a huge difference in your car good maintenance in the car will mean the car will become reliable in the near future and the problem with some cars like the e-series they came with problems with factory like the water pump wastegate stuff like that that was already from factory there's no stuff you can do besides change it of course if you get one of those cars of course now they're really old but it's if you guys want to be careful you guys can just get it and take it to a shop and they'll change it for you to a better brand part of course like i said in the last segment bmw parts are really good but like i said some parts came out bad so you can, you can look for replacement and are better don't let that scare you just because one series of cars was bad doesn't mean every car is bad amazing car my friend has a 1995 325i which that's the 335 from that year it's an e36 and that car has 228,000 miles to the clock and that car has running perfectly fine no problems like i said it all depends on your maintenance of of course when you guys get a modified car it's going to be like a little more complicated because you guys are pushing the things too hard but at the same time if you take the precautions you can make it last longer like for me i know i tune my car so my boost increases what do you guys do you change the charge pipe and that'll extend the life will not really extend the life because it will be open to crack either way doesn't mean every other car All right, guys, so in conclusion with all those myths, are they true? Are they not? Is it unreliable? Is it really expensive? My conclusion to that is it depends on the owner and what type of car you get. For F30s, I've heard, I mean, this car has been out since 2012. For the most part, the F30s are really reliable. E-series are really reliable. And when I say E-series, I mean E30, 36, 46. I'm not saying the V10, E60 BMWs. No, stay away from those. You don't want a V10 on a BMW. That's a stupid decision you can ever make in your life. But to conclusion with all this, it all depends on the owner and the car you get. Of course, like I always say, the better parts you get the more reliable it's going to be if you give a good maintenance to your car it's going to work perfectly fine but like i say guys be careful with the things you do watch out for like future problems if you know this i, I know it's not i know okay don't say stupid shit. i know this is not a part but let's say if i know this is going to give me a problem in the future and it's starting to crack up get it before it's too late and before it's too late what i mean is like if this gives you a problem that means the whole car is going to start giving you little problems whatsoever so by replacing parts that are going to bring in the future you can save your car's lifespan by adding more years to your car and it's going to be more enjoyable for you and enjoyable for your pocket because you can you can save some bangs yeah like drove saying just know what you're doing Basically just because it's a german car doesn't mean it's expensive to own he had a muscle car they're expensive because they're not cheap headers are basically triple the amount of mine people misconception is they're hard yeah no it's hard because you don't know anything about it he didn't know anything about muscle cars how to work on them and he learned so i hope you guys do learn something about uncovering the myths of the bmw like always guys this is edwin my homie, homie drill recording from the back from sinaloa thank you so much for watching if you guys don't mind please subscribe to the channel we're, we're going to the route to a thousand subs so you can get paid and drunk and pay rent this month if you guys like this content please do me a favor subscribe to the channel like the video if you guys learned something share it to your friends or someone that's planning to buy a bmw mercedes an audi a porsche a ferrari and leave a support if you guys learned something in this channel please share it like i said comment if you guys wanted to talk about something specific and that's gonna be it for the video guys thank you so much for watching enjoy